We had day two of Detroit Lions organized team activities with one more day to go Thursday the 25th. And while the biggest news coming out of Detroit Lions camp was Calvin Johnson mingling with the staff and with Coach Dan Campbell, even a pitcher with Brad Holmes, we have just a couple clips that came out. Now, one was of St. Brown and Marvin Jones catching passes. Marvin Jones looks fantastic. He looks like you couldn't even tell he was in his uh, 30s. St. Brown goes up there and gets it. So we got to see Jamison Williams yesterday, and we got to see a couple other receivers today. But here's the highlight of today's video. Yesterday we talked about C.J. Gardner-Johnson, and when he was going to tackle David Montgomery, was he going to tackle him? And it seems like some of you guys, and most of you guys in the comment section said it wouldn't have been a tackle, but uh, Brian Branch and Jack Campbell would have cleaned up if there was a missed tackle. Well, CJ got his revenge today when it came to the defense. Now, I'm going to play this here, and then it's only a six-second clip, but, man, we are fiending for some football, and we're going to break this thing down. Now, this is, first, I couldn't tell who this was because if you look at his right knee, there is a, he has a brace on it. And I'm looking and just his throwing style looks like Jared Goff. And if you look very closely, there is a little bit of gap in that red. So this is Jared Goff right now. And he's throwing to, I don't know who this is. I can't tell who this is. This right here is Alex Anzalone. I'm going to let this play a couple of times. And then I'm going to tell you what I noticed. Let's let it play. Batted down by John Kaminsky. Picked off by C.J. Gardner-Johnson. And look at him. Now, this is guys playing in, in, in pajamas, but they're having fun, right? And CJ is making amends for that missed tackle, presumably yesterday. Here it is. Kaminsky, without the club, is able to get the deflection, and CJ looks like might have taken it to the house in that situation because it looks like they're on maybe their 25 or 35-yard line, and this is CJ, GJ, taking it to the house but it's it's one thing I want you to see because I was very perplexed by this now again this is just guys in pajamas getting the shaking the rust off and it's nothing to be worried about but the first thing that I noticed here was okay once I saw that it was Jared Goff I'm like okay well how did this happen because Jared Goff went nine games without an interception in 2020. Two, he ended the season without an interception. He had one turnover that was a fumble exchange in that Carolina game. But there's Jared Goff here, and he's throwing. Now, here's John Kaminsky here. Now, why is Jared Goff throwing right to a man? There's nobody in between Goff and Kaminsky. He's staring my man down, and he's throwing it. And look at, look at Kaminsky go up and bat it. it. That's not hard. That's not hard to do. So I'm thinking to myself, why did Jared Goff do this? Why did he step up and threw it and throw it? And I realized that the protection had broken down, right? Because right here is, I want to say that's Matt Nelson. So Jared Goff is already, the defender is already, is that Charles Harris? I think that might be Charles Harris right there. But the defender is already behind Jared Goff, which means the protection broke down. Now, my assumption is Jared Goff did what he usually does is is he sometimes he can crumble un, under pressure. He steps up, he throws it directly to pretty much John Kaminsky, which is something we do not want to see during the regular season. Again, I'm not really criticizing Jared Goff, shaking the rust off, but this is something we definitely don't want to see during the regular season. So he goes up, Kaminsky bats it down. But before that, look at look at Anzalone with the trying to be slick holding. I can't tell who that is. 88. Is that 88 or 89 right there? That might be either Brock Wright. That might be Brock Wright right there. And then C.J. Gardner-Johnson, out of nowhere, picks that thing off. And he is gone. Now, obviously, you're not trying to get hurt. Nobody's trying to make actual contact. Because we saw today that the Patriots actually got in trouble for a few teams got in trouble, but the Patriots got two organized team activities docked because they were playing too aggressive, practicing too aggressive. So they had a OTA docked, and there's going to be a fine involved. 
So this is fantastic, though. CJ making up for yesterday's kind of shake and bake. But Alex Anzalone, and if you look at this play, he's a, Alex Anzalone right here is – look, look. He actually is holding whoever this is right here. So it was a very lazy day for these fellas, obviously. Nobody's trying to get hurt or anything like that. But it was just something that I saw. And this – these videos seem to do very well. You guys seem to like them. I know this is a little late. I had to work, so I'll get you your nightcap Detroit Lions. But let me know in the comments below. I'm not worried at all about Jared Goff throwing a, a OTA interception or anything like that, but it's good to see C.J. Gardner-Johnson. He's a new face in Detroit Lions Nation, man, and he is going to bring a much-needed spark to a secondary that was severely lacking in 2022. Just think about it. Jeffrey Okuda, Will Harris. Amani Arurarie. Like we had, it was terrible back there. But to see that type of excitement and speed in uh, OTA is fantastic. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. You guys are awesome. Take care of yourself and each other. And as always, go Lions.